passing the proclamation about the discrimination that's happening in the city. That was wonderful. But now we're going to hold you accountable to all of it, which says that there needs to be action. And thus far, we haven't seen any action from the Labor Council related to it. So we hope you join us in our actions that we're going to be taking. We've had rallies. We've had pop-up rallies. Um, we've uh, gone in front of uh, people's offices and demanded support. And uh, it, in, in public health, anyway, it has had a lot of effect. We've had a lot of movement to where it was like stifled. And we've been working on that for a long time. But there's a lot of things that still need to be addressed. And so because of that, uh, we want to just keep reminding you guys of what it is exactly we're talking about. So I have some members here that are going to just give a little minute or two to tell you basically what they're going through. And so um, I hope at the next executive board that you guys kind of figure out something that you're going to do with relation to that proclamation. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Cheryl Thornton. And um, part of the proclamation that Brenda's talking about, it said to return Cheryl Thornton back to Betrayal Hill Health Center. It was voted on here and passed. We need support because I have not been turned back to my workplace. I was unlawfully removed from my workplace. And so I'm hoping to get support with that. And we're also hoping to get support from our Labor Council when we have the public hearings about the systemic discrimination that is um, persisting in the city and county of San Francisco. Thank you. My name is Jesse, Jesse Stanton. I'm a shop steward at the uh, Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. Um, uh, Office of the Chief Medical Examiner is a pretty small uh, workplace and there's a very anti-union management and, and uh, certain work groups, uh, even some representative employees are, are very anti-union right wing. Um, we've had a lot of anti-union activity there, um, but one of the ways that has manifested is uh, one of my colleagues here, Alyssa Jones Garner, uh, was going through some rough patch and, and in my capacity as a shop steward, by way of helping her out, um, we both uh, incurred, I, I, I incurred uh, a lot of retaliation uh, where she was in, in, enduring some uh, pretty serious uh, primary discrimination and harassment. And if uh, she talked for a minute about the... Hello, my name is Alyssa Jones Garner and I work at the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. For almost a year, I have endured nearly daily harassment, discrimination at the hands of my supervisors. I've had trash thrown in my face and told to do something with that. I've had to, sorry. Um, this, uh, she happened through no fault of her own to become injured uh, just by, by a swinging door, uh, injured her arm. And uh, since then, she's been uh, enduring her own retaliation. They're refusing to let her come back to work uh, on any, uh, with any sort of accommodation or, or modified work plan. And um, then that, uh, I don't want to uh, put my part too high, but uh, in, in my capacity as a shop steward, it's, it's spilling over onto me. And, and now, now uh, I'm, I'm literally afraid to be at the workplace for, for fear of, uh, of assault and uh, other form of violence. And just to speak more to that, Jesse has actually been physically assaulted by an employee under the direction of our chief medical examiner, Michael Hunter. And this took place in front of Michael Hunter, who stated, if I can repeat, we're tired of that union shit. We don't want that union shit here. In a time when we need unions more now more than ever. This man in his capacity as shop steward has given me support through every violation I've experienced, every degradation. He has been there to fight by my side, to protect my rights, even those that only use the union to service their needs, the, the fee payers, the ones that don't want to give fully to our fight, but want to use our resources. He's defended them as if they were one of our own. And to be disrespected in that way, to have 
to be physically assaulted in your workplace where you should be safe, and then to be told by HR, by management, that no, it's your fault that you were assaulted. It's your fault that you're being discriminated against. You should be more compassionate to your supervisors and understand where they're coming from. This is what we've been told. This is what we've been told all the way up the line. Why aren't you being more understanding? And in my mind, if I had been raped, would you be telling me to identify with my rapist? Would you be telling me to welcome them with open arms and trust them? This is what we endure daily in our fight. We are now at a facility that is completely isolated from the rest of the city. No one knows what we're going through. We only have each other. And every day, we are targeted. We are isolated, we are demeaned, we are belittled. We have to justify our intelligence, our humanity, and demand dignity every day. All I ask is that when we have our actions that you please show up, show them that the union supports our own. We support humanity and dignity for all and we will not tolerate abuses of anyone. Hi, my name is John Wadsworth. Uh, I'm from the San Francisco General Hospital. Uh, I'm a shop, I, shop yeah. steward with, with 1021. Uh, some of you have uh, met me previously. Uh, I was brought here uh, by the renowned Brenda Barros and mentored by her for the last couple years. I'm also the appointed uh, chapter vice president at, uh, at the Zuckerberg General Hospital. And uh, what I'd like to speak to you about uh, is, is, is some of the issues that we have with discrimination. You know, they're, they're very serious issues. And in the department that I work in, I work in the pharmacy department, the inpatient uh, facility for the uh, hospital and um, we have I have represented scores of people a very very large group of people and uh, a good number of them are professionals uh, they're pharmacists they're technicians they're there's uh, storeroom helpers they're you know all levels of service in the pharmacy department and um, there's a good number of people that are being subjected to uh, a very high degree of discrimination and harassment and workload, uh, um, um, uneven distributions, uh, using work as, as a form of retaliation. Um, the, the, when these issues have been brought forward, when I've represented these persons, you know, I have gone through years of harassment and retaliation myself. And I've done a very good job at representing these persons. You know, I've pushed them back, I've fought them back. You know, there we you know I have a very big group of people that are want to talk about the harassment and the retaliation that's taking place. You know, th when I've taken these issues to the city and 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 explained to them that on top of you know these serious federal and state law violations that there have been a number of code of conduct violations. People are acting out unprofessionally. They're acting out unethically. And, and there are times when, when people are being subject to discipline based on fictitious accounts that management is pursuing. And you know, at that hospital, in that department, it, it, is, it is out of control. There, the, what is happening there is, is outside the, the, the normal boundaries of, of, of professional etiquette. People are just acting out and being, and, and the HR department and the upper management, the officer of that department is complicit in, in this behavior. It's continuing. And uh, I, I have a, a person here, uh, one of the professionals that works there. Um, he happens to be one of the persons that uh, we represented, uh, 1021, 
We took his case uh, through a grievance process. It was one of the few that we took to arbitration and won. And uh, he had pursued a position and through, through nefarious hiring practices, you know, he was not able to promote. And since then has been continued to be retaliated against. He's had his assignment eliminated. Even myself, I've had my quality assurance uh, eliminated two times. And it's, it's subject, the whole thing is subject to representing these, this group of people. And so he's here now, his name is Brian Marr. Um, he'd like to, to make a statement and let you guys know what, what he's been going through at, in, at inpatient pharmacy department. Hi. <laughs> My name's Brian, I'm a pharmacist at um, General Hospital. So there's a lot of things that happened in the past for at least the last couple of years, like five or more years. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse. And any of our supervisor and director has no accountability at all. They could do anything they want and not be accountable for it and continue doing that. And Brenda and John has been helping me uh, brought up this issue to, uh, to the public and things has happened to me. First of all, you know, um, in, in uh, General Hospital, we have two classes of pharmacists. Uh, clinical pharmacist and staff pharmacist. I'm a staff pharmacist, 2450. And our class has always been discriminated. We have the lead staff. We are short people all the time. We have use agency two to three pharmacists every single day. And it's, the, the supervisory priority is high to clinical first. They are the first get best schedule. If you hire today, you get day shift. None of the new 2450 get day shift. Uh, they don't care about seniority. Uh, doesn't count. We are short people all the time, and they're not willing to hire more 2450, but they are willing to hire more 2454 as ASAP as soon as possible. And that's unfair. I'm the third most senior in the department, and the fifth most senior in all the pharmacists in patient. And I cannot get a day shift, which is unfair. I, like John said before, that my case went to arbitration with one, and next thing they did, they limit my day shift assignment and forced me to go back to graveyard. And I asked, the, I asked the supervisor, when this will be open for day shift? Either someone retire or someone die or someone leave. <laughs> That's what his response was. It's so unprofessional, this class, the supervisor. And they can do anything they want and no accountability. And it's still happening. Age discrimination. A lot of the, the old employees like us that we want to move on, learn, do other stuff in the pharmacy. We're not given the opportunity. The opportunity are given to the newest person come in and they could have the pro project or, or assignment and that's not given to any one of us. I have applied so many reassignment positions throughout the department and they hire someone who has less experience, not even inpatient experience at all. And they got the assignment before me. And this happened time after time. And not only that, the IT supervisor is, is, is malicious because you know, I asked him, is there a position opening? Yeah, there's a position opening in about two or three weeks. I will let you know. But it's already posted that week and he didn't tell me. So I missed the deadline to apply for a job. Uh, not only that, um, a lot of you know, other pharmacists that I have, do, the uh, senior pharmacists, they're not given any opportunity at all. That you ask them, I say, we don't have any opportunity for that. Next thing you know, look at the schedule, someone get a special project and not tell anyone of us. And I don't think that's fair. And I'm asking this, you know, this kind of this management be accountable for everything that's happened to us and treat us with respect and fair for every employee. And you cannot treat people not fairly. And that's why I'm speaking against the management because they don't treat us with respect at all, any one of us. When we say something, they will tell you against you. And this happened time after time after time. And, um, I do enjoy my, my job with my coworker and the doctor and nurses that I deal with. But you know, I should not be penalized for doing my job that I enjoy doing because of management and force me to leave or make a workplace so hostile that you don't even want to be there. And it's not right. And I don't think it's fair. I, I think the, the, the general the general sense and theme, you know, that what I think what what I recognize and, and what some of the other uh, uh, 1021 uh, leadership recognize is that there, there is a high degree of discrimination that's taking place. 
there's, there's a very high degree of age discrimination that's taking place. People of age are being targeted and retaliated with, with heavy workloads. And the, the stewards that are representing these persons are being targeted. It's, it, it, it's, they, they are going unchecked, unchecked completely. I, I was taken in the office a week ago, told to, to, to make a statement and apologize publicly to the staff. <laughs> And if I didn't, and if I did not do that, he would send me to HR. This is this is the, the, they they are emboldened to take action against shop stewards, and it's unchecked. My name is Sue Wong. I work in the Zuckerberg uh, San Francisco General Hospital inpatient department. I've been there for almost uh, fourteen years. And what's happening in the department? I mean, we heard tonight at the San Francisco Labor Council, there seems to be a lot of harassment, bullying, discrimination. Is, is that the case in what's happened to you as well? Yes. Um, I hear things from, you know, our, our direct um, supervisors. I hear it all the time. And it's not just the current um, group. It's um, previous ones, too how they retaliate on certain individuals. They made it very clear. Sometimes I think they forget that, you know, who they're speaking with or, you know, they just, they just speak before they think. So like with my case, about three years ago, um, I was one of the individuals in my department that was sexually harassed and come to find out it happened to several individuals in the department. And who did this? It was another employee <laughs> in our department, but in a separate um, area. Okay. Yeah, it's in a separate area. And I try not to bring it to light because I didn't want to get that um, individual into trouble, but it was reported. I had um, spoke to someone that I worked with very closely closely and he told me that he had to report it to protect everyone but HR investigated but nothing nothing happened Garcia uh, Barbara Garcia sent me a letter and basically said that they found my findings um, true that it did happen and it was up to my supervisors to take care of it but when no one, at that time, the director never approached me. And um, none of my supervisors came to me and asked me. And at that time, my direct supervisor, um, the main supervisor, was a female. And she never approached me. In fact, she was heard saying to another um, supervisor, asking how, why wouldn't I go to her? And the reason why I didn't, and I told HR this, I said I did not go to her because I don't trust her. Because she actually verbally stated to me a couple of times about retaliation on another employee. And, and Barbara Garcia is head of the Department of Public Health in San Francisco. This was brought to her attention. Mm -hmm. She sent me the letter stating that of the findings. So why didn't she do something to get your managers to do something about this? I tried, I spoke to the, at that time, the other supervisor that was um, the one that I could approach, but he couldn't do anything either. He just told me that um, it was confidential. That's all they would ever tell me. I followed up on the letter, calling back the um, HR office. All they told me was, well, it's over, it's done with. And, and when something like this happens, which is a very serious situation, and somebody is able to get away with this kind of uh, action, uh, what kind of atmosphere does that bring about when there's no accountability? I don't know. I just feel, I feel really disappointed at the system. HR, in fact, hinted me that this individual was transferred from another department to where we are. So it tells me that they knew that this individual had past actions, similar actions, and they choose not to deal with it. Talk about the investigation. Mm, the investigation. Yeah. The investigation didn't really 
I don't even know what happened. I went into the、um, office. I gave my statement.、Um, Which office did you go into? I went into the the headquarters here on Market Street, the one, the same building as the controller's office.、Um, I went in there, I think twice. The first time was to take the、um, to what do you call it? They recorded everything, and that was like a couple of like two and a half hours. So they documented this. They documented everything. They called other witnesses. I was on the phone with the、um, investigator at HR for hours over the course of like a, over a month. But no one ever came back to me from my department, my superiors, about the outcome, or if I needed anything else. And in fact, the supervisor that supervisors、uh, supervises that other individual、um, warned me like maybe a year later. You know, she questioned me why I was in her area, and I said. Well, I was just doing my work. I needed to communicate with another individual, and she said, "Well, you're not supposed to be here, because my employee can't go to where you are, so therefore you can't come to where he is." I said, "No one ever told me that. No one ever communicated with me. I felt like I was a victim, and I continue to be one. Like it was never addressed. I felt like it's never been taken care of. Nobody cares." I feel like you know that person is protected for whatever reason. I don't feel like the investigation was fair. They basically just sent me a letter and said, "Well, it's done with. What you said was true, and that's it." So there, it sounds like they're just failing to do their job. If they conduct an investigation, say it's true, and then nothing happens, what does that say? Right. He's still he's still working there, and you know the only thing is. They're protecting me. Is they took his access away, so he can't come to you know our department in in our area. That that's all. So what would you what do you think the city should done? Because it seems like there's other problems throughout the DPH of similar incidents of retaliation, bullying, harassing people, terrorizing the workers. I mean, to, to work under those conditions, it seems like it's very difficult. It is. HR told me that. The city has a zero tolerance policy. I don't believe in that, because it sounds like from from what HR hinted me that this has happened previously to this in, from this individual, but he still continues to work here. So it sounds to me that they just pass him along, pass him along to it will become someone else's problem. And Barbara Garcia, who's the director of the Department of Public Health, is personally aware about this situation. Yes, she's the one that signed the letter that was sent to me. With the findings. And how long have you worked for the city and county services? This November would be 14 years. 14 years.